Hello and welcome to our third video in our mini-series on the Sacrament of Confirmation. Um, we've had Father Simon and Lauren, um, but obviously now you're joined by me, Tom. Hello, nice to see you all and I am with Deacon Paul um, once again. Um, so, in our first two videos then we've spoken about the Bishop's Prayer and the laying on of hands, the descent of the Holy Spirit in Confirmation. In our second video we talked about the oil, the oil of chrism, and how we're anointed on the forehead by the bishop. Um, so in our third video, this video then, um, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about the promises that we make in the rite of confirmation. And it's amazing because the way we've presented these videos today, we've actually gone from the middle forward and back. We're going to the first part of the sacrament of confirmation. That is the making of our promises. And these promises are very important because again, I'm going to remind you of your baptism. Most of you won't remember your baptisms, most of you. In fact, maybe none of you, but certainly these promises that you're making today were made on your behalf when you were baptized. It was those people saying, right, we'll make them for her or his behalf at the moment, but when they're old enough, they'll come back and make those promises themselves. And your confirmation is you coming and saying, I'm ready now to take on those promises. And the promises are that we, yes, we believe in God. We believe in Jesus, his son. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. And we believe that Jesus lived in this world, died, rose again, and is still with us in heaven and in this world. We promise, yes, we believe in the church. We believe in the saints, the communities all around us, and we believe that we have the chance of life everlasting. So it's our way of saying, yes, this is all we believe. And what we're going to do is to say, I do, several times, because we're going to hear those promises in the creed. We're going to hear the creed, the Apostles' Creed, broken up into various sections, which ask us, do we believe in God? Do we believe in Jesus and all of the other things? And we think about what we're asked and we say, yeah, yes, I do. Or simply, I do. And that's us confirming those promises that were made on our behalf. We're doing it ourselves now. Yeah, so as Deacon Paul said, these promises are made on our behalf at baptism. Um, so presumably that was a while ago for most people watching this. So just in case you are uncertain about what those promises actually involve. We do have a video now of someone renewing their promises, so we'll get to hear what they sound like now. But today you've reached a new stage of your life, a new responsibility for yourself, and so the promises that were made for you today must be made by you. You must speak in your own name, in your own person, with your own voice, and say that the faith of the Catholic Church is my faith. I embrace it. I will live it. So I'm going to ask the candidates now, please stand and renew with me the promises of your baptism. So I ask you who are to be confirmed, do you renounce Satan? and all his words, and all his empty promises. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who came upon the apostles at Pentecost and today is given to you sacramentally in confirmation. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it. Christ 
So having seen then that video of someone renewing their baptismal promises, um, Deacon Paul mentioned that they come from the creed. Um, all I want to ask now is why do we need to use the creed? Why do we need to repeat this long string of text? Why do we need to reiterate over and over again what seems maybe to you the same thing over and over again? Why isn't it simply enough just to say, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus? Why do we need to have this list? I think the creed is another marvellous example to remind us of what we're all about. And it depends which version we use. We might use the Apostles' Creed. We might use a longer creed at Mass. But it's nice. There's a, again, it's bringing back this community feel. Because when we have, well, every Mass is special. But when we have a Sunday Mass, a feast day Mass, when there's more of the community gathered together than maybe as usual, and please God, we'll have more of the community gathered together more often, we can say, let's say the Creed together. Let's remind ourselves what we're all about. And the lovely thing about saying the creed is, we can actually then go into the next week and say, yes, just those words that I was asked a moment ago. Why can't we just say, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Why can't we just say that? We can during the week, but it's nice to remind us why we're saying that, and to actually hear all of those parts of the creed. It sets out what we're about, and it actually, the creed, acts for us like a landmark on our journey through life. This is why I'm a Christian. This is what helps me. This is what helps me live God's life. This is what I'm all about. I, I never actually considered the community aspect. Um, I'd never thought, you know, at Mass we stand up and we recite the creed. Um, I'd always just considered it. I only usually think of myself when I'm doing the creed, um, as self-centered as that sounds, because I'm I'm worried about making a mistake and getting it wrong, and then maybe people laugh at me. Um, but the community aspect, like you, we mentioned in our first video, you said, you know, it's about all of us coming together as a community, like confirming our faith. So we're saying all these things together. It is reminding us then that we are part of this massive community, this worldwide community where all of us, you know, we can express our beliefs together. We all believe in the same thing. I hadn't considered it, which I think it is quite a nice thought, to be honest. And you see, it's a real sense of saying this creed, we're all in it together. And when I'm by myself, I can remember we're all in this together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting.